the gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Cohen, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Firstly, General, I want to thank the uh, work of the Civil Rights Division. I guess Mr. Perez was responsible for that, for first working with the Liberty Bowl Stadium in Memphis and working out our accessible uh, capacity seating arrangement and also working on the juvenile court issue where the division uh, saw to it that the, our juvenile court will be a model for the nation and protect the rights of young people, which was so necessary. And I also want to thank you for working with Mr. Scott and I to see that the tax division filed suit against Mo Money that took advantage of people with fraudulent uh, tax preparation. So I thank you for that. Uh, I'd like to question you about a few issues that bother me. One is the, the former Alabama governor, Don Siegelman, who uh, was the governor of Alabama and probably the last Democrat statewide official there in the past and maybe in the future for a long time. Uh, and he tried to get a lottery in his state, which I did in Tennessee, and I know how difficult it is. And in so doing, he uh, found himself in court and convicted and in jail and a case in which an unprecedented 113 former attorneys generals, Republican and Democrat, representing 44 of the 55 states, have said his prosecution was a grave injustice. All of the, just a numerous amount of legal experts have said that it was a grave injustice and that the uh, prosecution uh, should never have taken place because the U.S. attorney, a Bush appointee, was the wife of the campaign manager of his opponent in a gubernatorial election, and that while she recused herself, she stayed involved. I know there are procedural issues about a pardon or commutation, but the president could pardon him now. Each day he's in prison, is, in my opinion, is a grave injustice, because all that man did in appointing that individual to a board that he was accused of doing, a man who'd been on that state board twice before, and he appointed him, was politics. And I would like to ask you, if you're I'm sure you're aware of the case, if, if there, you can assure me that you will review his case, because in my opinion and the opinion of 113 former attorney generals, an innocent man is in jail being deprived of liberty. Well, the, um, he's not eligible. There are procedural issues. I mean, he's not eligible to apply for a pardon because he's currently serving a sentence. Commutation is not possible um, because I understand he has an active appeal. Um, <clears throat> so those are the regulations under which um, we, we operate, and those are, potential, those are potentially or obviously problematic with regard to the relief that you are you're seeking. So you don't believe the president could issue a pardon now? I mean, the, the procedures you have are limitations you put on your Justice well, Department. True. The president has no limitations. No, that's true. The, the president's pardon power is close to uh, absolute, and I, so I think that's right. I, I'm talking about Justice Department regulations. And is the Justice Department the, the head of your division that looks over these is a Mr. Ronald Rogers, another Bush appointee. Is that not? Uh, I believe he was appointed in the Bush administration. Yeah. Right. And, and he has been brought up by the, uh, the IG, and the IG has said he should be investigated because he gave false information on a pardon request. He misstated mis, uh, uh, what was the, the facts. And I want to know if he's under investigation and if you looked into the IG's suggestions about Mr. Rogers for misrepresenting information transmitted to the White House. Yeah, there were some difficulties um, in connection. I don't remember what the individual's name was um, about information that was, uh, I guess, relayed to the White House from the pardon attorney's office. And, but I think corrective measures have been put in place so that that kind of mistake would not occur in the future. Well, I would hope not, sir, and I give great faith in you. My concern is that there's nothing more important than liberty. And taking your liberty is the, probably the, the most the harshest thing the government can do to a person. And we've taken the liberty of this gentleman and I believe we need to look at that case. When 113 former AGs and Republican and Democrats say it was a grave injustice, I think it needs to be looked at and, and try to remedy. And I think there are other cases. Mr. Scott brought them up. The disparity in crack and, and cocaine, we changed the law. All those people in there who serve longer time than they would have under the law now, the president could commute their sentences. And the, the, one of the greatest threats to liberty has been the government taking people's liberty for things the people are in favor of. The Pew research group shows that 52 percent of Americans think marijuana should not be illegal. And yet there are people in jail, and your Justice Department is continuing to put people in jail for sale and use on occasion of marijuana. That's something the American public has finally caught up with. It was a cultural lag, and it's been an injustice for 40 years in this country to take people's liberty for something that was similar to alcohol. You have continued what is allowing the Mexican cartel's power and the power to make money, ruin Mexico, hurt our country by having a prohibition 
in the late 20th and 21st century. We saw it in the country in the 20s. We remedied it. This is the time to remedy this prohibition. And I would hope you would do so. I know my time is, is almost gone. I would like to ask the chair for just one brief the, moment. The gentleman's time has expired, and we still have uh, more than 24 members who have not asked questions of the Attorney General. So I yield back the balance of my time. Uh, and and <laughs> the, chair would, the chair would advise members.